Welcome to the Red V TV show, supported by Chapel House Cars for the 2024 season. We have a match, Kevin. It's not the real action just yet, but we do have some Sunday Rugby League to enjoy this weekend. Are you looking forward to it? Uh, I am indeed. I think a lot of people like uh, a bit of Sunday Rugby. Um, there's certainly lots of call for it on, on our social media whenever there's... Uh, the games are on a Sunday. People look forward to it. So hopefully there'll be a decent crowd on as well. Well, before we get to that, Kevin, there has been a little bit of news this week, which has created a little bit of discussion. And that is the news that Jack Wellsby and Morgan Knowles have been named joint vice captains for 2024 in support of Johnny Lomax. That news coming from Drew Derbyshire. Uh, of Love Rugby League from the club's media day. Excellent. Um, yeah, I think it, it, it makes sense to to obviously announce who your vice captains are while you've got a new captain. Um, a lot of speculation over who those players could be. Uh, I know there was a lot of speculation of who the captain uh, could be before Johnny was named it. I rightfully saw Johnny was named captain. Um, but two, two worthy players uh, to join him in that leadership team. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that we have a bigger leadership team than obviously Johnny, Jack, Morgan. Um, we're quite well stocked with a few of those senior players who could have been named vice captain. Um, and just because they're not vice captain in name, it doesn't mean that their leadership will be taken away off on off and on the field. Yeah, correct. I think you're completely right. We've got a number of players who are very experienced, um, who who have been there and done it uh, and will be able to guide the younger ones or at least get the message from the coaching staff over as is wanted. Um, there's plenty of names that, that you can throw in that, of the likes of uh, Alex Wormsley, for example, the likes of Mark Percival, who seems to have been about for ages, the likes of Tommy Makinson, who's been about for ages. You could throw all of these into the, the group of, um, like a leadership group. I know Connie gets mentioned in it as well. Daryl Clark will now be in that. It's we've got we've got so much experience. It's not just down to a one, two, three men. This this is different groups who can lead at different times and who need to lead at different times. Yeah, I've seen the um, surprise from some people on social media that it wasn't Tommy Makinson. Um, named as vice captain, and I think that's based on his longevity um, in the Saints lineup. But is this a case of succession planning? Um, we know Johnny Lomax has been named captain, and he's going to be there um, until the end of 2026 at the earliest. Um, so potentially these two will still be around and in, in for tw for the 2027 season. Hopefully, anyway, uh, Morgan. Currently 27, Jack obviously a little bit younger. So are we appointing these as, as the vice captains with the future in mind? Potentially one of these two will become the next Saints captain after Johnny. And, and it's just, and it's, it is literally succession plan. And obviously Tommy, uh, 32 at the moment. By the time Johnny retires, Tommy may well be at the same point in his career. Yeah, it'll... It looks to me that way. It looks to be um, that, that you have a proper plan in there. And once again, you go back to the leadership group and you'd imagine that Johnny Lomax, Morgan Knowles, Jack Wellsby will lean on the likes of Tommy for experience. It's not pushing him to one side and saying, you're not the vice captain, so they're not going to listen to you at all. It's, it's just about, as you say, I think it is that succession plan. I think it is that... Who would we want or who will be next club captain? Morgan Knowles has always been spoken about a potential club captain for the past however many years. He's been spoken about as someone who could potentially take on that role. Um, and it just looks like that is the plan that's in place. Yeah, some tongue-in-cheek wags suggested that we needed two vice captains so that we had cover for when Morgan is undoubtedly suspended. Uh, well, <laughs> not on this show, Kevin. Not on but, this show. But is there a case there? I know 
Wello spoke last season, didn't he? Um, about Morgan, and it was along the lines of he needs to wise up and and be the leader and step up. Is this potentially putting that responsibility onto him? Um, is it what he needs to grow just that little bit further that to realise just that he is that a leader of this team and that he has that responsibility to to lead by example? Yeah, it's it's possibly the recognition that he started doing so as well. Um, because I think you leave yourself in an awkward position, and we know with the current tackle rules. And one thing I will point out is from last weekend, eighteen players have been charged. Eighteen players have been charged um, by the disciplinary panel. So he possibly will get into that bother because people are getting used to the new rules. But as someone who is learning and has been given that responsibility, it's probably the recognition of you are at that age now where you are the right person for it. You probably weren't two, three years ago, but now you've matured that little bit more and you are someone in the future that we would want as captain. It's all very well, as I say, we talked about it for 10 years or so, that he could potentially be a captain. It's all about the maturity of being good enough and having a level head and being able to be on the field when you need it to be a captain. Um, I tend to think, going back to, to other players who could have been, I tend to think that I like someone in my spine to be the captain. So I want to see a full-back, half-back, hooker, loose forward, maybe a second role, because they tend to stay on the park a little bit longer as a captain. If you're very special, if you're a Malman Inger, if you're a Jamie Lyon, you can captain from somewhere else. But he fits that criteria, doesn't he? Um, and there's not, there's not a lot of there's not a lot on, of wingers either who go on and captain sides. So there's one um, or two, but not many. Yeah, again, it's it's probably unfortunate that if if Tommy was in a a team different to ours, which didn't have this much longevity in the team, he'd have been captain long ago. If he played for a team that had a higher turnover, he'd have been captain long ago. Absolutely, he would have been. But there's that many outstanding uh, people to, to be named it that he, he's just unfortunate. Um, he's unfortunate. And as you say, it's probably the, the, the right time for Morgan and Jack to be part of that 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 team. Yeah, I would, I would almost... If I'm looking at it, who will be next Saints captain if they both stick around? I would assume it'd probably be Morgan for a couple of years before then Jack takes over. Um, yeah. Assuming Jack stays around long enough. <laughs> yeah, there's obviously assumptions over contracts and, and things like that. I know Jack's obviously just signed a new one, but in the future, we, we've done it in the past where we've had uh, joint captains when we were at Witness, wasn't it? James Graham and Paul Wellens were joint captains for a season. Uh, and James Graham obviously went off to Australia. So you don't know what will happen, but go back to that phrase that you've used of succession planning. It feels very much like that is the plan, that Jack's been captain in his country. Morgan Knowles has been in and around that, that leadership group for a while now. It just makes sense. Yeah. Um, I didn't realise what you said about 18 players getting banned last weekend. It's a topic for another day. Um, but yeah, can't wait they've to be watching charged. the half. Yeah, they've been charged. I'm not they've not all been banned. There's some that are looking up to six games banned. Uh, but it's it's 18 that have been charged. Um I mean we're gonna get onto the squad in a minute. <laughs> you just hope that you just hope that if you bring in new rules in, you've got to allow a little bit of leeway with with all this. You can't just start throwing bans out there when players are trying to players are trying to play with ever shifting goalposts and ever shifting rules. What I will say is, if you're going to televise every game, if you're going to want fans to turn up to games, you can't have your stars sat in the stands every yeah. week. Yeah, right. and when. When someone needs to be punished, that's fair enough. That is absolutely fair enough. Anyway. Do you know what? It feels like a long time since we've had a moan about discipline. 
You can tell the season's coming back, can't you? Yeah, you can. Um, yeah, to, to be fair, it was probably probably October, wasn't it, when we had the last last whinge about the disciplinary panel. But anyway, squad news. I'm not naming all the changes from last time. You can if you want to. Is this why we've named 33 players? Just in case. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot there. Who's missing, Kevin? <laughs> <coughs> well, Sione Vitalci is not there. Matty Lees isn't there. And Morgan Knowles, I think, are the, the headliners of, of players who, who are missing from that uh, from that squad. See, that's why I've got two vice captains. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, this is just a case of give your first team a run out for half an hour and then mix and match after that, potentially. Yeah. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll cap. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, we see it every single year. The result does not matter. The result doesn't matter. It'd be nice to see some some partnerships click and some players get good minutes into them. But the results at the end of the day doesn't matter. It's the one in a couple of weeks' time that does. Yes. And do you know what, Kev, I say it every year. Pre-season, whether it's Saints, Rugby League, watching Everton, I always say after 15 minutes, why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, it, 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 I'm it, selling it, this one. It, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Go and get your tickets. Still available. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's a first chance for all of us to see Wanga Blake um, because we did, and a lot of the first team squad obviously didn't have a run out uh, against Swinton, so it's good to to be able to see them and see how they they kind of fit into Paul Wellen's plans and his thoughts. Um, <sighs> Do do you say it that because we're playing London first up at home, it's not treating London as a pre-season game, but because they're missing a couple of and then they're not coming up as full time, that you can do the half an hour rather than having to play your first team for sixty. Yeah. And the essentially your London game is the first real hit out. And not treating them disrespectfully, it's a game you should win comfortably at home. Yeah, with with everything they've just said, like not quite being full time, not having. I think they've lost a couple through injury as well in pre season. We should win that game. We sh should be in the operative word. Should win that game. I'm not saying we will. I'm saying we should. But I am. That's a Fair enough, but that's it. You can have that clipped. Um, but well, Kevin, what I will point out is if we do lose our open home game to London, the fan reaction video will be our biggest, yes, video ever. We yes, might be hitting a million in the next week, but we'll hit a mother million the week after. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it then gives you the, the chance to. Where well, we've had two games in the past and we've kind of done this, then narrowed the squad down from 33 to like 21, but all 21 have still got to run out. It's kind of what I feel like we're going to do with regards to London. The club would never say that. The club should never say that. But I, just in the back of my mind, I've been thinking it for a couple of weeks that have we got a little lucky with getting London first up that we can treat that as professionally as we should, but also be able to still be a little bit, I don't want to say undercooked, because you shouldn't be undercooked, but a little bit, that's your big hit out. That's the one, right, lads? You've got to get into it now. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm trying to say, don't you? Yeah, you're trying to be respectful, but we're really not. I am trying to be respectful. Absolutely, I am. Yeah. Uh, can I just point out, I've seen Wanger Blake for the first time. Um, Wanger is massive. He is a huge human being. Um, it, videos do not do him justice. Um, if he runs as fast as he looks, he can run. You wouldn't want to be in the way of him either. Um, I get the impression he could well be a, a fan's favourite. Um, Excellent. So really looking forward to seeing him. 
Um, Red V's Noah Stevens makes the squad at number 31. And it's good to see some of the reserves and academy prospects also being rewarded probably for their efforts um, against Swinton the other week. Um, and they'll get a little bit of game time as well on a bigger stage. Yeah, and, and that's why uh, I will keep reiterating that it doesn't matter what the score is. It's about getting minutes into these players. It's about going out there and being absolutely knackered when you come off because it's it's just been one of them tough games. It's why you step up in class and, again, not being disrespectful to Swinton, the squad that we put out reflected the game that was going to happen there. This is a reflection of we are playing a Super League team, so it's the first team squad who are out. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting a chance to see Johnny Vaughan against better opposition. Um, Dayon Sambu, um, quite highly regarded as well. And then obviously, um, from the academy, George Whitby, a potential halfback of the future of the club. Uh, Owen Dagnall, we've spoke about him being a potential wing replacement. Um in the future, um, there's names on that list too. You, you'll in years to come, you'll be saying I was there when when we seen them have the first hit outs. Um, so yeah, do you know what? I underplayed it at the start. Get down to the totally wicked on Sunday at two pm. Um, to watch stars of now and the stars of future. Yes, I'll see us in our alternative shirt for the first time. I like how they said it'll be the first time that we'll wear this kit at the Totally Wicked. I wanted to see in brackets, I'm probably the last. Yes. Um, it, it probably will be, to be fair. Yeah, right. And then on top of that, the real action gets underway um, in a couple of weeks' time. But the week after, we have Huddersfield away, Saturday the 24th of Feb. Uh, tickets are on sale. and. Um, I'm quite like happy to see Huddersfield actually going for a respectable ticket pricing for the away fans. Uh, twenty two pound yep. for adults, seventeen pound for over sixty fives, ten pound under seventeens, and five pound for junior members. Um, not entirely sure. Are the season ticket swaps on? Um, just for juniors, yeah. Just wondering why it says five pound for junior members. Um. Yet yeah, isn't that how isn't that how it works? No, junior swaps five pound. Yeah, that's what I just said. Didn't it used to be free? Yeah. No, it's been five. It's been it's not it's not been free for a long time, has it? Well, I don't think it has, though. No. Well, it should be. Well, <laughs> oh, well. do you remember the olden days, Kev, when you got a season ticket for twenty eight quid and you got your every game home and away? Yes, those were the days. Yeah. Then they invented mobile phones. <laughs> Uh, no, pretty sensible pricing from Huddersfield. Uh, good to see that we're not potentially subsidising the home crowd or lack of it um, for their cheap tickets. Yeah, it's um, you hope to see it across the board, ourselves included, uh, at, a, at a, a decent price. We've had this discussion about Good Friday and how Good Friday is a premium game. It's, it's good to see that there are some games in there, though, that um, that are reasonably priced. It's half five kickoff on a Saturday as well. Um, so if you can make it across, please do add to the atmosphere. Yes, um, and I've put up uh, the Jared coaches uh, are running to Huddersfield. I believe the initial batch of coaches have sold out. There is next run being put on, and he probably won't. Thank me for putting this on because you'll probably be deluged in phone calls now. Uh, but you can get travel for £12.50 over to Huddersfield if you get in touch with Dave Howarth. I'd suggest Rapid. Um, if not, you can go with the club. £16 for members, £17 for non. Um, but your cheaper option is Dave Howarth with the Jericho. Okay. There you I'm go. Glad. Sponsors batch as well. So that's why he's yeah. getting the push. There we go. Okay. Right, Kev. Wait, wait, leave that till till Batch's uh, Batch's preview. Leave that. Stop giving him more. I know, I know, but he's a good lad, isn't he? He comes on sometimes. Uh, right. Yeah, right. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll carry on with our player previews over the next couple of weeks, and we will be back 
on Sunday for an instant fan reaction after a pre-season friendly where the result does not matter. Correct. Fitness and performance do. Catch you soon.